Come on, let's put our hands together. Let's welcome everybody that's watching online. Come on, we know the drill. Maze Landing, Summers Point. How is everybody doing? Yeah, yeah, we are so excited. And uh, listen, listen, we have been uh, kind of talking about it, but it is Miracle Weekend because we truly believe that God is up to something. In fact, if you're not used to it here at Fusion Church, go ahead and tell your neighbor God is up to something. Come on, tell them God is up. Yeah, that was terrible. Try it again. Come on, Maze Landing. Some, come on. God is up to something. Yeah. You got to get some uh, dialogue going in this place. Otherwise, we're going to get ourselves in trouble. And yeah, as promised last week, uh, we're going to have some fun in the house today. So uh, there we go. Just had to test it. Hey, let's put it together for our creative team. They always do a great job around here. And I know some of us are going, uh, has he ever uh, used a saw? Yes, I have. Uh, that, that honey-do list in my house is really, really, really long, and so there's always things going on. Thank God my wife's into gardening this year, so I've put the uh, power tools aside, and I've got my uh, gardening tools out. But we're in a series, two-part series. We started off uh, last week uh, with a title called Don't Overcomplicate It. How many of us tend to overcomplicate life? Yeah, the rest of you are a bunch of liars. Come on. <laughs> Overcomplicate, like all the time. How many of us overcomplicate coffee sometimes? How many of us overcomplicate like what you're trying to wear? You know, like is the hair in the right place? The makeup, you know, the, I mean, it goes on and on. And so last week we kind of outlined the vision of the church that Fusion Church exists to reach people far from Jesus, to uh, equip Christ followers and to go to all the nations. Right there in the app, hopefully you got the app, but Fusion Church exists to reach those that are far from Jesus, equip Christ followers, and go to all the nations. And come on, when we dig down into the vision of what God is doing, revival begins to break forth in this community. Now, the vision is great, but how many of us have been to a place where the vision is awesome, but what's on the wall is not happening down the hall? How many of us have been there before? What's on the wall is not happening down the hall? Let's say that together. What's on the wall is not happening down the hall. Now you got to say it with a South African accent. So it's wall, not while, okay? Hall, not howl, okay? You got it? Okay, let's say, you ready? One, two, three. What's happening down the wall? Is not happening down the hall? Yeah, pretty good. Maze Landing, you ready? Okay, what's on the wall is not happening down the hall? Okay, you would never pass for a South African or like a bunch of British folk that we have here in the church. And so last week, we outlined the Fusion 4. Okay, do you remember it? The Fusion 4 is number one, we want to have a healthy faith. We want to have a healthy freedom. We want to have a healthy family. We want to have healthy finances. Now, keep, the, keep that up on the screen. I, I termed it a little different. We want to be able to grow our faith. Number two, let's read together. We want to be able to find freedom. Number three, we want family matters. Okay. And number four is financial freedom. Okay, so last week, again, if you missed it, watch it online, share it with a friend. But we, we talked about growing our faith, and then we talked a, about, um, you know, what does it look like to be able to find freedom in our life? Here, here is the problem, okay? Here is the problem, is that we tend to go through life, and um, something just happens. Have you ever been there in life when something happens? Like, you thought your marriage was good, and then it fell apart. You thought your business was going good, and you found out your partner was stealing. I mean, you, you thought everything was good, and then someone found out you had an addiction at 3 o'clock in the morning. I mean, you walked in, and it was an aha moment. Uh, you went to the doctor, and they said you thought you were healthy, but you weren't healthy. I mean, the list goes on and on. Have you ever been there before, you know? Like, I'm working on growing my faith. You know, I'm working on finding freedom. I'm working on, um, you know, what's it? Family matters. I'm, I'm working on financial freedom. But, 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 but it, just, it just doesn't happen. And then all of a sudden, you know, you go to the doctor and the doctor says, can I spend some time with you? Have you been there before? You know, the, the, the bank calls and says, you thought there was money, but there was no money. In fact, I, I've been a part of a church before. We started a building campaign. Like we had st- contractors in the ground, and we thought there was money in the bank, and when the first draw for $100,000 came, and we went to call the bank for the money, there was no money. Because how many times have you gone to a bank and said, show me the money? But we had an investor, and the investor had stolen $1.3 million, and he was faking the invoices all the time. 
How many times do you go to, you know, and say, show me the money? Every one of us are going to go back to our investors and go, I want to see the money right now. Like, you show me my money. But, but something happens, and in the process of that, it kind of like, you know, life just gets kind of cut off a little bit. And it's a health scare. It's a, a marriage scare. It is a financial situation. It's a spiritual situation. Now we got a problem, correct? It, it's, a, it's, a little, it's a little uneven, uh, uneven in, what, in what's going on. And, and so here, here is the reality, is, is we tend to, to overcomplicate life. But I, I want to say, don't worry we, God, has got this, correct? Like Fusion Kids, I love this t-shirt, uh, that biggest family matters here at, at Fusion Church. And so we talked about growing our faith, we talked about finding freedom, but I wanna hunker down today in family matters, and I wanna hunker down today in uh, finding financial freedom. Because we, we, here's the reality, okay? We, we recognize that there is an attack on the family. So family matters, okay? We recognize, uh, we could read the statistics today, we could talk about divorce, we could talk about affairs, we, we could talk about infidelity. I mean, and, and all of us know the statistics, and we, we've literally, can, can we be honest? We've numbed ourselves to the statistics, correct? Like numbed it. I mean, we, 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 I mean, it comes on the news. It comes through social media. And, and we've numbed ourselves to social media. But I love, I love what it's, the scripture says in Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. So Old Testament, Joshua. I love my bro, Joshua. He's just crazy. He always wants to take on a region. I think that's what Fusion Church is doing with this region. So Joshua 24, verse 15 says the following. It says in verse 15, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you. I've never read it like that. Like if, if, Serving God seems undesirable to you. Like, if you don't want to do it, then choose for yourselves this day in whom you will serve. So I've, I've read the scripture over and over, but I've, I've never seen that there was a choice. So if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day in whom you will serve. And then it says, whether the gods of your ancestors, okay, culture, serve beyond the Euphrates or the God of the Amorites, Okay, in, in whose land you are living. And then it says this, and let's read this together, all locations together. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Come on, let's try it again. But as me and my household, we will serve the Lord. You know, you know Joshua says, listen, serving God is important. A, it is important. Now, number two, it is a priority. Like we need to be able to place a priority. Like family matters. Joshua is going, if you don't want to do this, it's all right. But don't worry, we got this. Like, we know what we're doing. Family is important. And here at Fusion Church, family is one or more. So you might be here and, and you might be going, hey, I'm just by myself. Well, awesome. Welcome home. You're a part of the family. Pull up a chair. Come on, tell your neighbor, pull up a chair. Tell the other one, you really need to pull up a chair. But because, because we want to make sure that the table is at the appropriate place. But here's the reality. Everyone's got a little wobble in their life. No one's perfect. There's no perfect church. And, and so Joshua says, uh, it's uh, me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So it's first, so it's important. Second is, it's important, so it needs to be a priority. And then third, it, it is a priority to Fusion Church. Like family matters, family ministry is important to Fusion Church. In fact, I was thinking this week, and that's the reason why I wanted to wear this t-shirt, because six years ago, when my wife and I were moving here, the church was at a place where they couldn't afford to pay me a salary, and so I chose to stir up my faith and to be able to raise my salary outside of the church. And so one church in particular, Gateway Church, uh, paid a significant amount of my salary so that we didn't have to put any pressure on the church. And in the process of that year, we believe, my wife and I and the elders and, and the church, believe that family ministry, children's ministry, student ministry was so important that even before I was going to be paid full-time by the church, that we would hire a full-time children's ministry director. Like not hire and you get 15 hours a week. No, no, like 40 to 50 hours a week, full-time in children's ministry. Can I be honest? I think to date, maybe in a large part of this area, 
we are still one of the few churches where it's not, oh, you do children's ministry, but you really do something else. Have you ever been to a church like that? It's like, what do you do again? Like children, really? Like you're doing everything else but children. And so at Fusion Church, family matters. Come on, tell your neighbor. At Fusion Church, family matters. Like it matters. And you might go, but I ain't got kids. Can you take care of kids? No. Can you run a computer? Yes. Welcome to children's ministry. But I don't like kids. Then check them in and move them on. (laughs) There's a place for everybody here at Fusion Church, okay? And you're like, but I really don't like kids. Then show up during the week and get the Cheerios ready. Because you ever seen how many Cheerios our kids eat? They're animals back there, okay? I mean, they get Jesus and Cheerios and life moves on back there. And so there's so many things. And I, I went back to my life. I mean, again, you know, we're not going to bore each other with statistics. But, but I thought about this. I thought, when did I encounter Jesus Christ? I was 12 years old. 12 years old when I encountered Jesus. I encountered Jesus not in a church, but at a youth ministry that that was kind of independent of a church. The youth pastor would pick me up and take me to church. His name is Bo. Youth pastor Bo, he's in his 70s now. He's actually going to be speaking here in September. I finally got him, you know, like 17 years later, 17 years of begging to actually come. I'm like, no more excuses. Get yourself on a plane. You're going to get yourself over here. And and so Bo picked me up, dropped me off, took care of me, paid for me to go to youth camp. I got saved on youth camp uh, when I was 12 years old. When I was 13 years old, I got filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and and got called into full-time ministry. And I thought to myself, I'm here today. Many of the team members are here today serving because God impacted their lives when they were under 14 years old. And so family matters because we know the statistics. I'm a product of divorce. I'm a product of addictions in my family. I'm a product, and the list goes on and on. And I've made a decision that we are going to have a priority on family. Again, you might be here and go, man, it's just me and my kid. It's me and this. It's me and that. And all those things. I want to say, hey, there's place for everybody at the table. Come on, let me say that again. There's place for everybody at the table. On a weekend experience, come on, just pull up your chair and come to the table. But listen to me today. The church, the church, you and I, we cannot afford to do business as usual. We cannot afford to do business as usual. We cannot maintain the status quo. We can't maintain what's going on. We've got to say that we're going to impact this region, that we're going to equip our children, that we're going to teach our children, that we're going to make it a relevant environment. And what I love is my son is out in a public school inviting his friends to come and literally goes through a list of dad. Who can we pick up on a Saturday? Who can we pick up on a Sunday? And because I was the kid that got a ride to the church. You know what I'm doing on a Saturday night? You know what I'm doing on a Sunday morning? Like pastor of Fusion Church? I'm like, where does the kid live? We better hurry up because I'm late to church and I'm going to get myself in trouble type of a thing. Come on, Fusion Church. Let's get our act together. Let's not wait for the kids to come. I mean, Monday night, Memorial Day, you all barbecuing. Our student ministry is here throwing a massive party. And listen to this. Massive party is cool, but 12 teenagers got saved that night. 12 teenagers got saved that night. That's 12 teenagers that will be in eternity. That's 12 teenagers that had their destiny changed. That's 12 teenagers that are going to go, man, there's some wobbly stuff in my life. But because there's a student ministry and there's a church that loves me, I know that I can find health in these situations. Come on. We can change destinies. So come on. Tell your neighbor, family matters. Tell them right now. Family matters. Family matters. Listen to this. I love changed life stories. In fact, when I got that story, and I thought of how I was impacted as a child, as a 12-year-old, I literally fell in my office this week, and for 45 minutes, just the word is travailing in prayer. Travailing. You know what the word travail means? Ugly cry. And Pastor Tom, May's Landing Campus Pastor, was meeting in his office next door, we've got paper thin walls and I'm trying to slow down the ugly cry because he's in a meeting and I don't want to think there's a demon possessed person in Pastor Brennan's office. And I'm like, ah, 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 trying to stop. Why? Be- because I felt the spirit of God come on this church. 
and say that there is a generation that we're going to raise up and it might not look the same as we expected and it might not act the same as we expected, but that literally God is birthing a revival in our children and in our teenagers and he's asking ourselves a question today, are we ready? Are we ready to contain the blessing? Are we ready to contain what God is doing? This story was emailed into me this week. This, this young man said, I began coming to Fusion Church three years ago, and my life has been changed drastically since. I'm a firm believer that if you do the right thing in your life, that your life will change for the better. Five years ago, I was hopeless, homeless, and 145 pounds struggling heroin addict. I thought I was so far gone from a life without drugs, and that this life that God had somehow chosen for me, I would spend nights tearing and asking, why God, why me? My family and friends were not understanding of what was happening to me. Years of putting myself through this agony, numerous rehabs, detoxes, months in jail, not knowing what the solution could be. Then after a little time of being clean, I heard about Fusion Church and I knew I needed a change. I came to my first service nervous, feeling alone, That's why it's so important to have an on-fire greeting and ushering ministry in this church, okay? That welcomes people when we're coming through the doors. Nevertheless, I saw something there that I knew I wanted. I saw people that were happy, smiling. I knew I wanted that in my life. I continued to attend, listen to this, for the next three years. And I'm beyond grateful when I say my life has changed drastically. Since coming to Fusion, I've been clean for over three years. Come on, let's celebrate that. It gets even better. He says, I'm engaged to the most beautiful woman in the world who also attends the church. Good job, buddy. Then Easter this year, we got saved together. Come on, that's worth the celebration right there. I'm also a stepfather to two beautiful children who attend Fusion Kids almost every Sunday. And then he writes this in closing. He says, the best part about this is that my fiance's six-year-old son this year was able to purchase two books from his school. The first book that he bought was a Bible. And at that moment, I realized how much God is working, not just in my life, but in my whole family. Thank you for helping. Come on, hold on. Thank you for helping me see what I couldn't see and that God was with me the whole time and I just needed to look up. That is worth celebrating right there. Come on, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. So today, today, you and I have an opportunity And our opportunity is to get in the game. Our opportunity is to say, man, I want to wear one of these shirts. I want to have that, you know, that fusion splash, fusion kids on the side. Because we today, through Christ, through Jesus, have an opportunity to change someone's destiny. A young person that we can love on. Just as my destiny was changed, you and I, regardless of who we are today, can say, man, I want want to be a part of it. And so here's the action point for this Family Matters in your seat pocket at Summer's Point in May's Landing in the cup holder is this get in the game card. I'm literally, as your pastor today, gonna beg you to fill one out. And I am not ashamed to say I will beg you and probably check every person leaving this church over the weekend. And I wanna say, man, choose Fusion Kids. Do not, ca- I don't care about the rest of this stuff right now, but say, man, I wanna be a part of changing this generation. I wanna be a part of making a difference in a child's life, just as Bo made a difference in my life. Family matters. Come on, on three, let's say family matters. One, two, three. Okay, so come on, let's turn our attention to financial freedom. Financial freedom. How many of us would say, (laughs) this baby's been at work in our finances? In fact, uh, they're going to throw a picture on the screen. I love this picture. I keep it on my phone so I can share it with my friends. But uh, Dwight from the office, when your friend finally convinces you to add up all of your debt, you feel like you're going to throw up. And so financial freedom is a big thing. Now, again, we know the statistics. Again, we know that um, obviously we've heard what we're supposed to be doing, but the honest truth is many of us are not changing. The reality is our table is massively wobbly in regards to financial freedom. And fi- in, financial, in not finding financial freedom in debt, in pain, in heartbreak, in sorrow, in all of these things increasing, I use the term, we have numbed ourselves, numbed ourselves to the statistics, and we continue to presume that an unbiblical financial lifestyle 
will f- somehow magically change our life. Let me say that again. We, we presume an unbiblical financial li- unbiblical financial lifestyle, we presume will somehow magically change our financial situation. The reality is that an unbiblical financial lifestyle can never give you a miracle. Let me say that again. An unbiblical financial lifestyle can never give me a miracle, can never give you a miracle. An unbiblical faith lifestyle can never give you a faith miracle. An unbiblical freedom lifestyle can never give you a freedom miracle. Only Jesus can give you the miracle. And that is the reason we dig here into the Word of God here. You, you, we've got Dwight from the office feeling nauseous, but here's the reality. 2,350 times in the Bible, 2,350 times in the Bible, the Bible talks about money and possessions. I mean, that's a crazy amount of times that the Bible talks about money and possessions. Why? Because God realizes how important this is to us. God realizes that he wants to give us a biblical standard for finances. In fact, Forbes magazine, a wealth management magazine in May 2012, asked the following question in the headline of an article. Is the Bible the ultimate financial guide? Think about it. Is the Bible the ultimate financial guide? If that's Forbes magazine asking the question, how much more should we as Christ followers be asking the question? Today, I believe that the Bible is the ultimate financial guide. Thank you very much. There we go. But the reality is, could we be honest? The reality is, many of us would say, yeah, yeah, the Bible is, but the saw is cutting away at financial freedom in our life. That's why over the last six years, every single year, we've done Financial Peace University here at Fusion Church. In fact, from my experience, many Christians have never even invited God into their finances. We've we've never even invited God into our finances. However, without God in our finances, we'll never have peace. So so I I recognize it because I spend a lot of time with people and I travel and I do coaching and, and, and I would meet with business owners that do not have God in their life, but they're financially successful. But there's always... In every state, in every continent that I've ministered in or coached in or consulted in, my wife and I used to have a a, a graphic design company. In every one of these things, when I would meet with someone that, that had what we would presume significant financial freedom, but they were not a Christ follower, there was always one thing missing, and that was peace. There was always peace missing. And so they had lots of money, but they had no peace. I've met people with no money, but lots of peace. The older I get, I think I want more peace than more money because you might have money, but if you ain't got peace, then you're losing all the time. And so again, let's drive ourselves back to Forbes magazine asking, is the Bible the ultimate, I love those words, the ultimate authority? The Bible clearly says that we can't serve both God and money. The the, the King James version, a, a different translation would use the word mammon. The word mammon is a spirit. So the spirit of money, and you, you would go, well, how does money have a spirit? Doesn't it talk to you all the time? In fact, I was just with my son at the mall the other day, and everything he wanted to buy, I'm like, is it talking to you? He goes, yes, dad, the shoes are talking to me. I'm like, no, they're not talking to you, you know? You just want everything. In fact, my wife gave me a warning. She said, Brandon, when you take him to the mall, he will con you into buying something. I literally walked into the mall going, Jesus Give me strength to say no to this child. And I'm here today to say I said no, and he didn't get anything, but we left and we went somewhere else and bought something, okay? I just had to like (laughs) win in that situation. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24 says this. It says no, and so many of us have read this before, but I think it kind of proves our point. No one can serve two masters, okay? Either you will hate, everyone say the word hate, hate the one and love the one the other. Now we've been there where we've hated. How many of us, you've, you've come to a place you've hated your job. You're like, ah, I can't take it. Okay. So you know that feeling, but you also know the feeling of when you love something, you, you can't wait to be a part of it. You show up early. You, you're ready to go if they ask you to do something. So that love, hate, the Bible says no, no one can serve two masters. Either you will uh, hate the one, love the other, or you'll be devoted to one. And then even worse, despise the other. And then let's read this together. You cannot serve both God and 
money. And so financial freedom is a massive thing for us here at Fusion Church. But because in our region, we build billion dollar temples to the God of money where they literally throw money to it. Now, I know for many of us here, you work there, and I want to say you are the light in a dark place, okay? So I don't think we move and circle the wagons and sing Kumbaya. I think we take the light into a dark place. Does that make sense? We don't circle the wagons. Come on, someone needs to get excited about that. But we go into the dark place with the light that we have. Because here's the reality. There's a spirit of mammon in this region, the spirit of money that is speaking to us that God has anointed called Fusion Church to break. That, that's why it's something that we're not going to shy away from. You might say, Pastor, what's the other uh, big thing that I would see in this region? The other big thing is a religious spirit. So every time we step out in faith, a religious spirit raises its head. The unchurch never raised their head. No one ever walks off the street and gives me opinion. It's always another church. It's another Christian that shows up to me in the grocery store and gives their opinion of what they're doing. I say, well, you should come and visit and see what we're doing and be a part of what God is doing in this place and come hang out on Monday night where there are 12 teenagers giving their lives to Jesus Christ and are radically worshiping God in a massive way. And so a religious spirit And the spirit of mammon is very similar because Pastor Tom said this as I was talking to him. He said, both are about trusting self and not God. I want us to get that. Both the religious spirit and the spirit of money is about trusting self and not God. Again, what's the common denominator that would be lacking in a religious person? Peace. Have you ever noticed that? The most religious people are sometimes the most mean people. The most religious people are sometimes the most critical people. Because why? There's a, there's a peace that surpasses all understanding. There's a peace that guards my heart and guards my mind that is lacking. Someone that is controlled by money or mammon, it is mine, and hasn't invited God into the life, is someone that is trusting themselves versus trusting God. And so as a, as a church and as a pastor, we're, we're not going to back off on this because we want people in this region to have financial freedom so that they can invest in a legacy of seeing other generations change because we're investing all the time. The question is, are we choosing to invest in the kingdom of God or are we choosing to invest in the wobbly table? Because here's the reality is I can try and fix this table, but it's always going to be a little weird. Whenever you sit down at the table, you're going to go, oh, I know it's wobbly. They might not know it's wobbly, but I, I know it's wobbly in my life. And so I believe in all my heart. Come on, church. I believe in all my heart today, all my heart today, that God wants us to be biblically, financially free. We, we can be financially free, but I believe that God wants us to be biblically, financially free. And how do we do that? How do we invite God into our life? We do that by the word tithe. Tithe is the 10%. And we do that because when I... Pray with my children. What am I doing? I'm inviting prayer into my life. When I do Bible study with my children, honestly, my two older kids were freaking out this week. I mean, they were acting crazy. I walked in and I said, we're having a Bible study. And, and, and they said, what? I said, we're going to study some scripture. And I literally went into Proverbs and I found scripture about fathers and mothers teaching and instructing. And we had a Bible study and I recorded it so I could play it for my wife, Danielle, so she could hear about their answers. Why? Because I invited the word of God into my life. And when the word, come on, get this. When the word of God came in, there was peace that came in. When we invite prayer in, there is peace that comes in. We invite the tithe into our life, there is peace that comes in. When we invite the presence of God into my life, there is peace that comes in. But we can invite God in prayer, we can invite God in the Word, we can invite God in everything else. But when it comes to money, we shut the door. I mean, bam, God, you're going to not have anything not in this life. And we wonder why we don't have peace. We wonder why. That's why the, the, the writer of Malachi And again, we we know these scriptures, but in Malachi chapter 3 verse 10 and above that is Matthew 22 and Luke 6 that you can go and read at home. Tell your neighbor that's homework. Come on, try again. That's homework. 
Malachi 3.10 says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Bring the whole 10%. Invite God into your life that there may be food, nourishment in my house. And then he says, test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates. Everybody say floodgates. And I'm going to show you in a few minutes what the floodgates have been in Fusion Church of Heaven. And pour out, everyone say pour out. Pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Now again, we invite God in in prayer. We invite God in in Bible study. We invite God in in worship. But for so many of us in our wobbly lifestyle, we don't invite God in. And I just simply want to say, would you trust him? Would you trust him? And in the next moment, I'm going to prove, I'm going to prove how God has done this infusion church. You know, we talked this week about the miracle announcement. Ask your neighbor, are you ready for the miracle announcement? Tell your other neighbor, buckle your seatbelt. Have you ever seen a miracle? I'm going to tell you about a miracle right now. Here's a statement that I want, to, I, want to, I want to start with. But where there is great blessing, there is great responsibility. Come on, let's say that together. Where there is great blessing, there is great responsibility. So there's so many of us that want a great blessing, but we're not willing to have a great responsibility to that blessing. We've got to be able to steward, steward that. Six years ago, I said Gateway uh, helped pay a significant amount of our salary for us to get here. Then when Hurricane Sandy came in, they were sending, Gateway Church was sending checks of $25,000 a piece for us to go in to help the community. And then when we started Maze Landing, we got to a place where we, where we needed $20,000 to buy the projector that Maze Landing has uh, for the screen over there. And, and like we couldn't go back to the church. And, and so Gateway stepped up and said, hey, we'll give you the $20,000. In fact, this Wednesday, my wife and I are going to Israel with Gateway, because listen to this, Gateway is hosting in Jerusalem a spirit-filled messianic Jewish conference. In the heart of Jerusalem, we will be worshiping with Gateway, and they're inviting 12 pastors from around the country to come with them and participate in this worship experience in Jerusalem. I mean, that's pretty radical right there. I mean, pretty radical. Where Jesus was, we're going to be with Gateway Church. And so a few weeks ago, I went down to Dallas and I was meeting with them and telling them what was going on. And I said, here's the deal, church. And I was meeting with some of the senior leadership. I said, our parking lot at our EHT location, like it's a big thing for this town, but it's not a big thing for our church. What do I mean by that? I mean that for us, ministry is children, youth, and adults. It ain't a parking lot, correct? Like we'll park on the, in the woods if we need to park. And so my dedication has been as your pastor is to see if I could raise the funds for the parking lot outside of the church so we wouldn't put the burden on the church. And so I sat down and I said, here's the parking lot. And I was meeting with one of their senior executive leaders and I'm good friends with him. And so in his mind, he's one of those guys that can just do a spreadsheet in their mind, okay? Like, and and he said, okay. So he says, to finish the parking lot, where you're at right now, it's gonna be half a million dollars. I said, yes, sir. He said, okay. He said, uh, and we finished drinking our coffee, and he said, well, let's, let's connect tomorrow. And so I left, and, you know, I'm thinking, okay, you know, they're going to do something. I just don't know what they're going to do. And so I left, and the next morning I was in Dallas, and I was in a, one of their sessions, and I saw the phone uh, ring, and I was like, I'm answering this, correct? You know, like, I don't care who it is. This guy's a little lower than Jesus. I'm answering this right now. And I ran out of the room, and I picked it up, and we had this conversation, and, and, and here's the miracle is that Gateway Church in Dallas, Texas, said that they would invest in Fusion Church $250,000 to help get that parking lot finished. Come on, Jesus, that is huge, huge. Now, again, with great blessing, there is great responsibility, correct? And so here it is. This, this was mind-blowing. And then we're going to close with this as we prepare to go back into worship. Uh, this was mind-blowing. Is that... They said, we're going to give you the 250, but we want it to be a legacy matching gift. Legacy matching gift. Because they said that, that there is a group of people in our church that have pledged to the God is able, but have never yet started for whatever reasons. And every one of us received an updated brochure and the pledge card. And don't stress too much about the pledge card. It's just in there because literally people have asked me, how can we participate? Okay. And so... The, 
that they said there's a group of people that have filled out the pledge card but have never started for whatever reason. We want this $250,000 to be a motivation for them. Second of all, there's been about 85 families that have joined us since November last year, when we had the God is able, the orange t-shirt, you know, campaign, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly. Didn't he just do it with a 250,000 matching legacy gift? I mean, God is truly able in that. And, and so the, the pledge card is for those of us that have come and literally you've come up to me and said, Pastor, how do I do this? I'm like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Well, we're not holding anymore. You can fill this out, drop it in the Connect kiosk. You can mail this in. You can write love notes on it. I don't care what you do. You know, you can just fill it out and say, hey, I want to be a part of going on. And then the third group that this matching gift. So for every dollar given, there's a dollar given on that from Gateway, okay? And, and so the, the, the people that haven't started, the people that, that uh, have joined but want to pledge, and then the third, and this is huge, we need to pray about this. There are business owners in this region that do not attend this church that want to give to us right now, okay? Business owners in this region that want to say, hey, I go to another church, but my business is so blessed right now, I want to be able to write a check to what God is doing. And so for trust funds, Business owners or not-for-profits, a matching gift is something the way they think about. And so again, as we talk about what God is doing, why am I sharing this? I'm sharing this is because I want you to know that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think, okay? I want you to know that if your financial life is a mess, we want to help you. I want you to know if your family life is a mess, we want to help you. I want you to know that, that if your faith life is a mess, we want to help you. I want you to know if your freedom life is a mess, we want to be able to help you. And here is the conclusion. Come on, let's grow in our faith today. Come on, everyone standing to their feet, all locations. Let's find freedom together today. Here's the third one. Family matters today. And here's the fourth one. Come on, let's find financial freedom. I want to pray a blessing over every one of us. Lord, right now, in this moment, God, Lord, I pray a rich blessing over your children, God. Lord, I pray, God, that you would allow us to steward what you're doing in this region, God. And we steward it in ourselves first, God. We get ourselves right first, God. And in this next moment, God, would you give us an opportunity to receive strength from you, to receive wisdom from you, to receive love from you. And we pray this and we ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.